Welcome to this Gretel tutorial in which we will run a logistic regression and also use Excel to understand what are the slopes reported by Gretel and how should we interpret them. In this video, we will start by running a logistic regression in Gretel where we have a binary dependent variable. Then we will observe the p-values of the coefficients in Gretel. We will then look at the slopes reported by Gretel when all other variables are held at their means. And finally, we will go to Excel to offer our own estimate of these slopes. Let's get started. Let's go to Gretel. The data we will use in this video is one of the sample files in Gretel. To open it, we will go to File, Open Data, Sample File. You click on Green and come to the dataset called Data on Educational Program Effectiveness. And I'm going to double click on this to open it. This data is about the effectiveness of a particular program called PSI in increasing the grades of students in economics. The variables contained are the GPA of the students before the test, their test in an understanding of college economics, TUCE, their PSI, which is a binary indicator that indicates if they participated in the program, and ultimately our dependent variable is a grade increase or decrease indicator and basically we want to see how much does PSI influence in increasing the likelihood of a grade increase. That is, our dependent variable is going to go from 0 to 1, and we want to make an estimate of PSI's role in making that a 1, having a grade increase. To run a logistic model, we come to the menu Model, limited dependent variable, and it's called limited because our dependent variable in this case only goes from 0 to 1. We're going to be running a logit model, and this logit has a binary dependent variable. The window we have to work with is very similar to the one we use when we're running ordinary least squares or multiple linear regression. In this case, our dependent variable is going to be grade, and my independent variables are going to be the other three metrics, GPA, TUCE, and PSI. Note that here below we have the option of showing the slopes at the mean or also the p-values. I will first run the model with the p-values and then we will run it showing the slopes at the mean. This is the regression output. Note that, as usual, we have a constant term and then coefficients for each of our independent variables. In this case, GPA has a positive coefficient that is statistically significant at the 5% level. It has a p-value of 2.52%. On the other hand, TUCE does not have a statistically relationship with the dependent variable. It does not influence the overall grade, which is our dependent variable. And PSI has a positive coefficient with also a p-value which is greater than 1% but lower than 5%. It is 2.55%. As part of the output, Gretel also shows us what we call a confusion matrix. This confusion matrix functions as follows. If the predicted probability of a grade increase is greater than 0.5, greater than 50%, then we're going to predict or estimate that in fact we had a grade increase. So in the cases in which there was a grade increase and our estimated probability of there being a grade increase is above 0.5, then we have that both the predicted and the actual value of grade increase coincide. Similarly, if the grade did not increase, case in which the actual value of the dependent variable is a zero and our predicted probability is also a zero in the sense that it is less than 0.5, then we have that both the actual value and the predicted values are zero. Meanwhile, in the cross diagonal, we have that there were three observations in which we had a grade increase, however, our probability is below 0.5. So we technically got these wrong. Similarly, there were three observations in which there was not a grade increase but our predicted probability was above 0.5. So even though the actual value was zero, our predicted value is one, and we got these wrong as well. These errors are also commonly known as type one and type two errors. 
But for now, let's just know that if we established our threshold at 0.5% probability, we would have gotten these wrong. I'm going to move this model aside. And now I'm going to rerun the model, but reporting the slopes. I'm coming once again to Model, Limited Dependent Variables, Logit Model, Binary Model, my dependent variable is once again grade, and this time I want to show the slopes at the mean. Note that most of the output is identical to the one we had before. The only difference is that on the right hand side of the screen, rather than reporting the p-values, Gretel is reporting us a slope. What exactly do the slopes mean? This is the change in probability of the dependent variable when we increase each individual variable by one unit while holding all other variables at their means. And understanding this will be easier if we use Excel to show what is going on. Since the slope represents a change when all the other variables are held at their means, it's going to be useful to have the descriptive statistics and in particular the means of our three regressors available. Note that the means are 3.11 for GPA, 21.94 for TUCE, and 0 0.44 for PSI. Now, I'm going to show you an Excel sheet where all what I have done is to transcribe the values reported by Gretel. Note that I have a constant, a GPA, TUCE, and PSI, and I have transcribed their coefficients from the regression outputs, and I have also transcribed the mean values from their descriptive statistics. Also, for reference, I have transcribed Gretel's reported slopes. Now let's try to understand where these slopes come from. Remember that these slopes represent the change in probability of there being a great increase of the dependent variable changing from a 0 to 1 when each of these individual variables increases by one unit when all other variables are held at their means. So in particular, let's examine what happens when PSI grows from a 0 to a 1. All other variables are going to be held at their means. So I'm simply going to copy the mean values of all the other three variables and copy-paste them here. Meanwhile, I want to examine the change of PSI when it changes from A0 to A1. We have noted that the mean value of the constant is 1, simply because when we multiply the particular value of a variable by its coefficient, we want to keep the constant, so we're going to use A1. Now remember that the dependent variable in this case is not the probability, rather what we have called y star. And y star is the log of p divided by 1 minus p. So the value for each of these cases, given that all other variables are held at their means and psi is 0, is going to be the sum product of the different coefficients multiplied by the values of the variables. So note that what we're doing here is really beta 0 plus beta 1 times the value of GPA plus beta 2 times the value of TUCE plus beta 3 times the value of PSI, which in this case is a 0. I'm going to do the same, but now when PSI is a 1. I take the coefficients and I multiply them by the respective values of the variables. Now this is not what we're interested in. This is y star. We are interested in p. And the formulation for p, the transformation, is going to be the exponent of y star divided by 1 plus the exponent of y star again. So now I'm simply going to compute this, the exponent of y star, divided
divided by 1 plus the exponent of y star. And I do this for both columns. Let me make a little space right here. So what we have down here is the probability of grade being 1 when PSI is 0 and the probability of grade being 1 when PSI is a 1. And note the change in between these two. I'm simply going to take one value and subtract the other. The change when all other variables were held at their means from changing PSI from a 0 to a 1 in the probability of grade being 1 is 0 0.45. And this is exactly what Gretzel has reported as slope. We can do the same exercise for all the other two variables in the sense that we can hold all other variables at their means and simply change the variable we're focusing on by one unit and the change in probability from that change is going to be the slope reported by Gretel. I will leave to you to try to estimate on your own the reported slopes for GPA and TUCE. Thank you very much.